Welcome to Paul Isley's Plant Education 101 from Rainforest Floor Incorporated in Torrance, California. We're here today with Paul Isley of Rainforest Floor Incorporated. He's going to give us some help about how to take care of Talanzios, these wonderful air plants that his nursery grows. Hello, Paul. Hello, Barry, and welcome, everybody for round two of our discussions on video. Uh, today we're gonna to talk about how to take care of Talanzias. It's one thing to like them, it's one thing to buy them, it's another thing to grow them. And people always wanna know, how do I grow Talanzias? And one way to start this conversation is by getting you to decide, do you wanna grow it in the place where you wanna grow it? Or do you wanna grow it where they're going to grow the best because those two may not be the same place. If you want to grow them where you want to grow them, you can put them almost anywhere for a month and they'll do just fine as long as they don't freeze or burn up. Uh, after a month then you might move them outside to better conditions, but for quite a while you can put them just about anywhere and they'll be just fine. If you want to grow them to grow them to their maximum, then you want them to get lots of bright light, you want them to get watered frequently, and you want them to get lots of fresh air so that they don't uh, stay too wet for too long, which can cause them to rot. And so, if you want to grow them where you want to grow them, uh, if you have any leeway in your choice, like inside the house, try to put them near a window that gets lots of light. They'll do better for longer in that kind of situation. Uh, people are often told to miss these plants. Over the years, we've recommended to not miss the plants because when you miss the plants, of course, it can work fine and the plants can grow great, but it can also not work fine. You can either miss the plants religiously and a little too frequently, and over time, the, the meristematic tissue at the bottom of the plant, where the leaves grow out from, uh, that stays moist even though the plant looks dry and the plant can rot. So that's not good, especially in the house where there's usually not a lot of ambient air moving around. They stay moist longer, so they can rot that way. Conversely, in the way most people have a hard time with the plants indoors, is that they don't miss them quite frequently enough. And what happens is, over time, you see how, how pinched the leaf edges are on this plant. Uh, what happens is if they don't get enough water over time, the leaf edges curl up, and we'll show you a close-up here in a minute. Um, and, and that's the sign that the plants are desiccating, they're dehydrating, they're drying out. So, misting will not fix that. The only way to reverse this process, and it's such a cool thing that you can do with the Talantias, I mean, it just, it's, it's wonderful. You can take these plants and you can put them underwater overnight, 12 or 14 hours, Take the plant out in the morning, look at it, and, and you won't believe it's the same plant. They just absorb the water over those hours and they completely rehydrate. If they do not, and the plants stay, the leaf edges stay curled up like this, it means that the cells suffered mechanical damage called plasmolysis, and they won't come back from that. However, the chlorophyll, the, 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 the cells that photosynthesize and produce the energy for the plant, they're still there. So they will continue to do that and over time, the plant will grow new leaves, the plant will be fine, it's just that those leaves won't ever uncurl. But the plant doesn't die. So, that's if you're, if you're indoors. Now, if you want to grow your plants to the max, then the way to do that is to have them outside, like I said, where they get lots of light, uh, they're watered frequently, they get fresh air, um, and, and they'll do great. They, they don't grow much when it's cold. If you live in an area that gets cold in the winter, uh, if you live in the tropics, they just grow like gangbusters all year round. The quid pro quo for that, if you do live in an area that gets cold, if you're in the tropics, they don't get color. So there is a trade-off everywhere you are. And it's very difficult in the tropics to grow species like Tectorum, uh, Straminia. Uh, there are species of Talangias that are stunningly beautiful, but they don't do well where it's hot real hot, real humid, and real wet. They, they tend to rot. So Barry, question Paul, number two. Yeah, Paul, so is it better to water these in the morning, in the afternoon, at night? In general, I know it changes place to place in America, but isn't it better to water them in the morning? I, I 
don't know if it makes a lot of difference, but the, I do know that the, the leaves respire at night. That means they breathe at night. They, they bring in the, the CO2 and they let go of the oxygen uh, at night. That's, they're called CAM plants, C-A-M, Crassulacean Acid Metabolism, so that they, they, their stomata uh, stay closed during the day and then they open at night and the gases come in and out at night. Now, if the leaves are wet, of course, there's a film of water and they cannot respire. So in that sense, yeah, if they're wet every night like that, that's not a good thing. If it's once in a while, probably doesn't make any difference. The most important thing is to water them uh, so that they stay hydrated. And if you can do it in the morning, that's fine. Uh, my good friend, Mark Dimmitt, uh, who's hybridized a lot of Tillandsias over the years, spent many years as a TA in Riverside at the University of California at Riverside. And he grew phenomenal plants. And the way he did it was he had his, his hose set up. He shot the plants with a hose on his way to work in the morning and he shot them in the afternoon when he got home, watering them twice a day because Riverside, California in the summer, is very hot and very dry. And that's how he got around that. And another very important aspect of these plants is that unless you're soaking them for you know, 12 or 14 hours, uh, more water does not help. So you don't have to sit there and just hose them down and keep the hose on it like you do for a rose bush or a tree. Once they're wet, they're done. If you come back in an hour or two and they're dry and you water them again, that's good. That's watering them again. But just standing there with the hose on, you don't need to do that. Just shoot them, wet them, and one and done. So I understand that you should feed the plants a couple of times a year. I know that you have a fantastic fertilizer that you make for your company. Yeah. And uh, how should people feed their plants? Well, we had this made years ago. It's called Epiphytes Delight. And epiphytes, by definition, do not have roots in soil. That's why they're called epiphytes. Epa coming from the Greek meaning growing on. Phytum coming means leaf. Epiphytum, epiphytes delight. And so uh, these plants don't have their roots in soil. And uh, most commercial fertilizers have a, um, have a urea-based nitrogen, which is fine for plants that have roots in soil because there's a bacteria that lives in the soil that breaks down the, uh, the nitrogen into ammoniacal and nitrate nitrogen, which the plants can use. But if you have Tillandsias and they don't have any soil and they're just hanging up like this, then you don't get to use the nitrogen, which is what promotes foliar growth. So what we did was we had this fertilizer made, Epiphytes Delight. It does not have urea nitrogen. It does have ammoniacal and nitrate nitrogen, so it is immediately accessible to the plants and they use it. As far as the frequency, um, you know, you can do that for whatever easy for you. If you're very conscientious, then you can, um, uh, you can put the fertilizer in the water and, and have a little bit in there every time you water. You've been watching episode two of Paul Isley and Rainforest Flora. Please tune in to episode three next.